Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the Bailey Wiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also make modular systems and scenes that you can use without any setup. If you're a DM who likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry VTT and Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Today, we're talking landing pages. They're a great way to keep information at your player's fingertips and also set the tone for your next session. Nothing quite sets the stage for a romp through the Nine Hells like a fiery opening scene and dark art. Our latest release of the BaileyWiki landing pages module is aimed at helping you do that as quickly and efficiently as possible without any of the usual headaches. So let's dive right in. First, let's recap our first release. We first introduced landing pages with a large variety of props and decor for setting up a table or similar scene. There's a whole lot of options in there that you can select to clutter things however you like. You can also get creative and use these assets for more than just landing pages. These same art pieces work beautifully for setting up a formal shop that your players can interact with without you having to actually micromanage the scene. If you wanna know where all these tiles are at, you can take a look at our previous release inventory page. In it, you'll find the locations for everything and brief descriptions of all of the different prefabs available with some smart functionality built in. These are meant for layering on top of any artwork that you already have. And you can find these prefabs inside of the BaileyWiki landing page prefabs compendium. They're under the general UI pieces and you bring them in and activate the monks active tile triggers. They have different pieces that have different displays such as hovering to show a map. To make these work, simply alter your actions and add in the change scene that you want to go to. From there, it's an on-click tile that works for everybody. So once you have this set up, it is the perfect piece to put in place on your own landing page. In our latest release, the landing pages really come into their own. Here is our simple preset version, which uses Monk's active tile triggers to teleport between the different scenes in the landing page setup. This is great for a lot of players or keeping things simple. The complex version keeps everything to one scene, which is nice if you don't want people running around. Instead, all of the elements hide and activate when you click on their corresponding menu items. Note that if you have multiple players, all of these things turn on and off for everyone. The real innovation here is this little tile up in the top right corner. When we click on it, we open up a customization menu. This controls all of the aesthetics for our scene. We can adjust the theme for the entire scene using one of six presets, such as changing it to this frost, which changes the color of virtually every UI element and adjusts the weather. We can also go through and customize individual elements, such as the frame images. And if we don't like it, we can go back to the previous one. There's further customization in the colors, where we can again choose from our presets so that we can mix and match, or we can use a custom item. The custom option comes with a color picker, and note that this color picker may look different depending upon the browser that you're using. This allows you to have maximum flexibility with these assets. The dialog system allows you to greatly customize all of the base landing page designs without having to know how Monk's active tile triggers works or going through each individual action to set up a new configuration. This even features custom token magic effects to allow you to specify any colors you want for a glow on this ornamental medallion. And of course, there are FX master weather macros in order to really change the atmosphere of the scene. You can also clear the weather if you like. Perhaps most importantly, there is a help button which will open this helpful journal entry in the BaileyWiki nuts and bolts module, 
that gives a breakdown of all of the different parts of this configuration tool. All of the menus also have a list of what tags they use to affect their changes. Everything on the scene is powered by Tagger. So if we open up our tiles, we can see that there are the menu-frame and menu-divider tags on these elements. Using these tags, you can add in additional elements that you want to change with the configurator, or you can build your own scene following this tagging convention to make it responsive to the configurator with minimal setup. Beyond initial setup, the real power of this is the flexibility between sessions. When it's only a couple of clicks to drastically change the feel of your scene, you can then radically change your landing page to reflect what's going on in your campaign. Did the party just open a portal to the Nine Hells? Well, then let's change this otherwise idyllic forest scene into a hellscape that we have. We went ahead and changed the theme of all the UI elements, and now with just a change of the background using one of our many background options and a tweaking of this fade mask, we have completely changed the atmosphere and really set the tone for this next session that proves to be much darker than the last. Speaking of backgrounds, there are over 20 backgrounds included in the landing pages module now. These will fit just about any atmosphere you're going for. Additionally, there are foreground props that you can use to further customize and dress up your scenes. So just how easy is it to make one of these landing pages? Well, let's go with the harder example, the multi-scene setup, and that is the simple setup. So we're first gonna make duplicates of all of the blank simple pieces. And I'm going ahead and putting them in this landing page demo folder. Obviously you can set this up however you want, but making these copies is the easiest way to do it. If you're working in your own world, then you could just import these scenes each time you're making a new setup. Name them to something descriptive. I'm using my characters and my journals, etc., as my naming convention. This is really flexible and very easy if you just use the existing scenes and make small tweaks to them. The blank is really the most in-depth example you could start with. Once you have your scene, the first thing you probably want to do is bring in the background image that you want. You can use your own, or again, there are all of these within the module folder. Adjust the size. I've been finding that I like a 1300 by 1300 square for these sizes of scenes. And I always like imagery of adventurers. Sending the tile to back has this fade look really nice. I can tweak that further if I want to match the color of the particular background image. I'm going nice and slow and picking out all of these colors so you can really see how easy this is to set up. Once we have our background in place, it's as simple as changing the theme whether a entire preset fits what you're going for or you want to do some further tweaking is completely up to you and will depend upon the feeling that you're going for. If you want to further customize it, there is the array of foreground props that can really add some extra life and three-dimensionality to a landing page. I'm going to use some swords like they've been stuck in the ground before or after this battle that has probably taken place. And like all tiles in Foundry, if you hold down Alt as you resize it, it'll maintain that aspect ratio. These swords add a nice little bit of three-dimensionality. I could find more if I wanted to spend more time on it, but you can see this gives a really nice effect right away. Before we leave this page, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our triggers. Under our Actions tab, we're going to change the change scene action to instead of going to what will probably be blank for you to the exact character page that you want it to go to. Mine's going to be all the way down at the bottom because it was one of the last scenes that I made. I'm going to select my characters. One thing to watch out for, and I didn't get it to do this in this recording, of course, but since these have hover effects, sometimes if you are editing tiles and you trigger a hover in or hover out tile while you're editing them, then the changes won't actually save. So just be aware of that and potentially move the tile configuration windows over to the side so you don't run into them. 
I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing by updating my teleportation over to the journal side. And once again, we're selecting my journals. Then when we click on this, we go straight to that blank journals that we made a copy of. And I want to set my background. Hopefully this is giving an impression of just how simple it is to dress these scenes up. And in a moment, we'll add some functionality to the journals and the actors. But with how easy it is to position things, I hope this also gets you thinking about what else you can use these techniques for. For example, if you combine this with something like Monk's Shops, you can then actually have a shop that completely runs on its own without you having to DM it. And you could have pieces of loot, like from the table assets, and have that function as a landing page. And again, as long as we're using these tag systems, we can customize any scene to fit this. The configurator works best with tiles that are white as they take the full tint. So the closer to a white color that you start with or a gray, the more it's going to take on that color and the easier it's going to be to work with. But you can apply this to just about anything. When I'm editing my journals, I am double clicking on my active tile and going to the actions and just changing this open a journal and specifying what I want. So I'll use this draft version of that help text. And I already have this set up for you for triggering player and check permissions. If you don't want it to obey the check permissions, simply uncheck that box. Now that we have all that, we can go back to our main menu and I forgot to update the menu. So I'm demonstrating here that this is very fast and very easy, even with making some mistakes. I think I forgot to mention it at the beginning of this as well, but I should have a timer going right now so you can see in real time how long it took me to set up these three pages. I'm not going through all of the steps of assigning all of my characters, mostly because I don't have six characters already in this world, but this is really easy and really fast. You may also find yourself going down the rabbit hole of really enjoying finding the combinations of theme pieces and colors that really suit your different backgrounds. And I know I went down this rabbit hole a bit. That's why there are so many examples and so many example themes. So if you make a background and landing page and theme that you really like, we would love to see it in our Discord. Once again, we've set up our theme and now the final pieces here are relinking to our appropriate menus here with the home. And then we're going to update these actor tiles to just open up an actor sheet that we want in specific. This example here uses player tokens, but you could just as easily use NPCs such as guild masters or important quest givers that you want to store information on. You could even replace these with journal entries instead of actual token sheets. And now we have a working three-piece set of landing pages that we can jump between that has all of our journals and actors, and they look beautiful as they are. And it only took us right around seven and a half minutes to basically from scratch create a really beautiful set of landing pages. This is really functional for a campaign if, again, you want to keep all of your information ready for your players and right at their fingertips. And it makes it so easy to change the look and feel of the campaign in between sessions. We can switch it to delving into the sunken temple that they found in the previous session. Or if they're leaving the city to either traverse the Nine Hells, it can go back to that hellscape. Or if they're exploring the wide open country, we can switch to one of those beautiful forested landscapes. The possibilities are really endless here, and we've really wanted to bring that capability to everyday DMs to where you can really wow your players with those landing pages and how they shift and change in between sessions. That's going to do it for our discussion of landing pages. 
and the latest edition of the BailiWiki landing pages module, which is available right now for our advanced Foundry patrons. Once again, this has been Zephyr for the BailiWiki channel. Thank you so much for watching, happy gaming, and have a good one.